Tegan here, and today's video we're going to be showing you why Celestron StarSense Explorer series of refractors and Newtonians are some of the best telescopes for beginners on the market. So first thing is first, I'm going to be taking you through a very quick setup process using the Celestron StarSense Explorer 130DX, and then I'm going to be doing a very quick overview of the dedicated app that comes with the StarSense Explorer. And then finally, we're going to go out in the field and see what this scope is really capable of. I'm going to try viewing as many deep sky objects as I possibly can in a 30 minute time span. First, we're going to set up the tripod. You want to open up your tripod legs until they're fully extended, press down on the center leg brace, and then you can attach your accessory tray. To attach your accessory tray, screw the included thumb screws into the three holes located inside the actual accessory tray itself. Once all three thumb screws are completely threaded through, you can then lay the accessory tray onto the leg brace, making sure that the thumb screws fall into the holes located on the leg braces. All right, so next you want to attach your slow motion control knobs. First, you want to locate the hidden hex key that's on the side of the alt azimuth mount head. Loosen the hex screw located at the end of the slow motion knob until it's no longer protruding into the insert. Slide the insert onto the altitude knob, making sure it is fully seated. From there, you can go ahead and tighten up that same hex screw until it's fully tightened. Twist your slow motion altitude adjustment knobs to test it out. Do the same for the azimuth adjustment knob. Be sure to place your hex key back into its original slot so you don't lose it. Now it's time to attach the optical tube assembly or the OTA. Turn the dovetail clamp assembly so that the locking thumb screw is facing upwards. Be sure to loosen the clamp enough so that it can accept the scope's dovetail. Slide the OTA until it is seated in the middle of the dovetail clamp, then you can tighten it down. Insert the phone dog by matching up the arrow with the black tab located on the mount head. Once seated, twist counterclockwise until the spring release pops through the bayonet mount. To remove the phone dock, simply press the spring release button and twist in a clockwise motion and pull the phone dock away from your scope. Next, we're going to attach the red dot finder and the eyepiece. Attaching both of these is quick and simple. Remove the dust cap from the focuser and insert the included 25 millimeter eyepiece. Then slide the finder scope bracket into the finder shoe located next to the focuser. Tighten it down with the included thumb screw. Now we want to calibrate our red dot finder to our eyepiece. We recommend that you do this during the day. Take off your dust cap and point to an object close to the horizon. Aiming your scope towards a parked car, a stop sign, or a telephone pole will work. We will be using a telephone pole in this example. To move your scope, grab hold of the telescope tube and move it manually to your desired position. Use the slow motion adjustment knobs to make smaller adjustments. You want to be sure that your view through the eyepiece is nice and focused. Turn the focus knob to achieve a nice focus on the telephone pole. Now we can align your red dot finder scope. Remove the tab sitting underneath the battery and power on your red dot finder. Use the knobs on the bottom and on the sides of the red dot finder to align it over the object at which you are pointing at through your eyepiece. Once aligned, your finder is now aligned with your eyepiece. After you have your scope set up, follow the quick start guide on Celestron StarSense Explorer's smartphone app. This quick start guide is going to show you how to attach and calibrate your smartphone to your smartphone dock. This process is actually very simple and is one of the reasons why we're such huge advocates on this beginner system. In fact, the entire app is extremely impressive. So once you have this set up, you're ready to start viewing the night sky. But before we get to that, let's look at some of the cool features that this app has to offer. First, we're going to look at the night vision mode. This is great when viewing under dark skies. It's going to help retain your night vision adaptation. Secondly, if you ever need to reference the quick start guide at any time during your observing session, pressing the quick start guide button will bring you right back to that entire process. Additionally, be sure that at the beginning of your session that you do have your location enabled. This is going to tell the app exactly where you are positioned on Earth. Okay, so navigating back to the app's homepage by clicking on the object's name at the bottom, the app is going to provide you with a bunch of information about the object that you're viewing. If you'd like more information, you can also hit the Celestron audio button. We highly recommend checking out the observing tips to get the best out of your views. This feature is actually very helpful. You can navigate through the popular objects in the night sky by pressing on the star button at the bottom of the home screen. And additionally, you can do a custom search on nearly any object in the night sky. And that includes Messier catalog, Caldwell catalogs, bright stars, and planets. 
All right, so we have our entire scope set up. We've gone through the app, we've reviewed some of the features. Now let's go out into the field, start exploring and see how many deep sky objects we can actually view through the StarSense Explorer 130DX. Okay, so I'm outside on this 23 degree night and I have my telescope set up behind me. It took about 30 seconds to attach my smartphone, set up the app and start viewing. This is the first time I'm actually sitting outside and, and setting up. So I, I have not run this routine before and I'm really excited at how, how easy it was. So I have a 30 minute timer set. We're going to view as many deep sky objects as we can in 30 minutes and I'm gonna dim this light just a tad. Hopefully you guys can still see me um, in my scope. We're gonna run the time lapse, starting off with M31 now. All right, so I have the double cluster in my eyepiece. This is the second object I viewed, but holy cow, I can see at least 100 stars. The two clusters are, I'm using the 25 millimeter eyepiece, the two clusters are right next to each other. They're open clusters, extremely apparent. I'm in Bortle 7 skies and they're still pretty visible. So on to the next target. Okay, so this is about my seventh target already and I'm pointed at Messier 27, that's the Dumbbell Nebula. Now I have my bright light pointed directly at my scope, Portal 7 skies towards the city. With the 130DX, I can still see the Dumbbell Nebula as a faint smudge in my eyepiece, but it's still right there in the center with darker skies. You could probably see some structure with this. So let's see what else we can see. Okay, so I just took a chance and pointed towards Uranus, and lo and behold, it was in, it was in the center of my eyepiece. Now this is the faintest looking star. This it's it's slightly turquoise in color. You can hardly see any color, but it it looks different than a star, and I can't explain it unless you look at it through an eyepiece. Okay, so I have Messier 45, the Pleiades, in my eyepiece right now. And again, I'm using the 25 millimeter eyepiece. I counted about 60 stars. The main stars, the seven sisters as they call them, were bright, vibrant blue, indicating that this is a very new cluster. And you can see that in the eyepiece. Just incredible. Okay, so yeah, I'm still in my clothes that I was in three minutes ago during my observant session outside, but. I wanted to be sure that I captured my emotions correctly on film because I'm absolutely blown away. During a 20, 30 minute time span, I wrote down all the deep space objects I was able to view through my eyepiece. I was able to view 19 deep space objects and that does not even include the objects that I couldn't see because they were obscured by the trees or, or houses or they were too low on the horizon. I'm extremely impressed and that's a very honest opinion. I am going to get out of these clothes and we're going to do a quick recap in the studio. So in conclusion, I had way more fun during this entire process than I ever thought I would. The initial setup was easy, but what really struck me, what I really enjoyed was the, the app. Switching from deep sky object, you know, star cluster to planets to double stars was so simple and so smooth. and it, it takes 10 seconds to change from object to object and it's right there in the center of your eyepiece. And that being said, I can't imagine a better scope for a beginner amateur astronomer. So in addition to all of this, you can attach additional accessories to your StarSense scope, like an aperture smartphone adapter, for example. By adjusting the three thumb screws on the smartphone adapter, you can actually position your phone's camera so that it sits directly over the eyepiece. With just a little bit of effort, I was able to achieve this short video of the moon through the StarSense 102 millimeter refractor.
So that's it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please let us know in the comments below. And with that said, clear skies.